Hi and welcome back to this third and final part in the short video series where I'm showing you how I'm creating a new e intro sequence for my online videos. Uh, so we're going to do the music in this stage but obviously in uh, parts one and two we covered the, the video content. If you haven't seen those parts I'm going to put a link up here to part two which would be worth going back and just looking at what I've done there and again obviously in the description there'll be links down there to part one and two as well so I recommend you go and look at those videos if you haven't done so. But yeah, let's go and jump into doing the audio content. We've only got a short clip, obviously it's only 20 seconds long, so it's going to need to be, have something in there that's got a bit of uh, life to it, a little bit of volume to it. Uh, I've already got a chord sequence in mind that I'm thinking of. A G minor 7 chord, there's a, a C7 chord in there, uh, there's a, an F minor, a, another G minor 7 chord, uh, another F minor bass chord but with a major 7 inversion on it. Uh, a variation on the C7 and another F minor chord at the end. So I'll just play those three for you. So. What I'm just going to move over into the digital audio workstation that I use, and I use Reaper. So I've already created a project in, Re in uh, Reaper. I've created several tracks in there. Uh, I've already got a track in here that's got the the chord sequence in that we're actually going to play through. Uh, and then I've added a, a sort of string bass track in here, which is just the root note of the chord sequence. Not exactly the most inventive way of doing uh, sort of a, a bass line or whatever, but it's, it's just to add a little bit of depth to that uh, chord sequence above. And then I've also put some uh, violins in as well. Uh, uh, and at the moment they're playing the same chord set, but I've actually moved that up three octaves. And again, let's just play through the, the uh, chord sequence that we're looking at. So... That's the basic chord sequence, but it's sped up a little bit. So again, if you look down on the workstation down here, I'm actually... Uh, I've got quite a high BPM in there, and that's because I actually want to have uh, the, the orchestra playing several notes as such. And the time signature I'm using is 3-4 uh, time signature. This top bass line is uh, a synthesizer. Uh, just uh, play some of that through so you can hear what it actually sounds like. So that's the effect that's coming through from the bass line uh, in the synthesizer. And then I say we've got a string uh, bass underneath that. But again, it's still playing the same same sequence. And that's just add a little bit of depth onto the bottom of that synthesizer track. And then we've got uh, some violins in here. Uh, the, the tremolo violin effect. I'm just going to come in here now. I'm just going to go to insert and add a, a media file, and this is the the track that we produced uh, originally when we bought we bought the other uh, file out. So I'm just going to open that and bring the audio in from this particular track. So that's now been imported into my uh, door, and I'm just going to line this track up. That is. In line with all yours and that's where the video file actually starts and this particular point here is where we'd get the, the video from and now you can see on the timeline we've got this bit of uh, a movement inside here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come down to this part of my timeline down here and then i'm going to go in and i just want to go and uh, turn that track off and solo this track so we can go and listen to what we've got And there we have the thunder that was in the original video. And so we can now see where that fits within the timeline of the rest of the track. So we can now understand from this, we need to stretch this out a little bit more, or we'll need to just change this audio track to whatever. We've got two choices. When we actually go into the final track now, we can either uh, save this track without this audio file from the video in it, and just save all the rest of the composition and put it out and then add it into the video file. Uh, as a, a new audio track or I could actually save all this including the thunderclap in here and I could just apply that as a completely new audio uh, track over the top of the video that we composed.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go, I'm going to turn off the soldering on this particular track here. And I'm actually going to mute this track, and I'm also going to mute my input track at the top, which is my temporary uh, uh, audio. And then we can actually come back into the front of the timeline here. And I'm just going to play what these three tracks sound like together at this point in time. Okay, so that's what we've got in place currently with the three tracks now sounds a little bit rough at this stage and the reason for that is obviously all of these three, three tracks have just been put in there there is uh no eqing or anything else done on those tracks at the moment so again when you come to do the final production i'm going to want to eq those tracks so that they all stand out within their particular range uh, and so i need to need to work on those and we'll come back to that uh, in a little while i'm actually going to go away now and i'm going to start to add in some more orchestral pieces I'll go away and do that now and then I'll I'll come back and show you where I've got to. Okay, I've just come across uh, one part that I thought would be quite interesting just to cover as part of this video. So I've added a uh, cello track in here now. I'm just going to demonstrate something now. So I want to play the notes that sit within that one particular octave and that one particular scale. But uh, as I do that, you'll notice that actually when we get to this this fourth chord in here, this this the second version of using the uh, G minor chord, it actually feels flat. So I'll, I'll just play it through and then you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's just uh, play those chords through now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try playing a G7 chord in place of that G minor 7 and just see how that sounds. Even though that chord doesn't actually fit uh, within the same scale that I'm using, it may actually fit within the progression. So let's just give it a try and see how that goes. Actually, that doesn't actually sound too bad, it's not perfect. I'm going to play around. Okay, so another option would be to play a diminished G chord, uh, which I think may sound okay, and would, that would also fit within the yeah, the F scale that we're currently uh, using for this particular track. So let's just give that a go and just see what that sounds like, shall we? I think that sounds okay so i'll probably go with that and put that in as the cello line and then uh, we'll go from there okay so i've recorded the midi in for that line there's a couple of just key things to note as well because i'm using the cello and we're actually using a, a long cello uh, and the way that that would then play the notes, the notes build each time as the cello comes in and so therefore we have to actually on the timeline just bring the cello in a little bit earlier uh, each note is going to start to play otherwise it will feel like it drops out of sync with the, uh, the rest of the orchestration and then also just add a little bit of variation to the theme as well we do have just a rest in here so we're actually only playing uh, two bars there rather than three bars and having a one bar rest before we come back in and at the end here again not actually doing the whole four bars the, the cello is just playing three and a half bars uh, but again, as it starts to fade out, it ties in with the rest of the orchestration. So just little things like that, just thinking about what sort of instrument you're playing uh, or would be playing and how that instrument would be played in real life uh, in order to make sure that you articulate it alongside all of the other tracks and all the other instruments in the orchestration. The other thing to think about, obviously, is just how somebody might play an instrument in real life. So there are various things you can do. So if I just actually play the, the cello section back soloed, one of the things you can do is actually change the dynamics of the playing as well. So let's just do that and just, I'll just give you a, an idea of how that uh, comes across.
So in that instance there, I'll just move the dynamics up and down, just so you can see the expression, the sort of the almost like push of the uh, of the person playing or the people playing the uh, the uh, cellos in that particular case. And then obviously there's all sorts of other effects we could go and change. So you may want to change the reverb on a particular track. an overview just to give you an idea of the different things you can actually go and change the different dynamics you can go and affect of the way you're playing and then just one thing to note in here as well because i was actually messing around with those effects as i was playing at this point and i'm not actually mastering the track yet but you can actually see on the meters down here uh, it gives you an idea of how much you're pushing through each channel so you know what sort of decibel levels you're pushing as you're doing the things and as you can see from here because I was actually changing some of the effects that were going on uh, with the cellos as they were playing, I've actually got into a situation where I actually peaked out the audio. Uh, and so it's very important, again, when you're playing these tracks through, that you actually want to be recording somewhere around sort of main, around minus 18 dB, or certainly no, you know, no higher than about minus 10 or something like that on any of these particular tracks as they're playing through in the first place. And that gives you a bit of headroom when I come to master at the end and I apply some EQ and some other effects and over and balance the sounds of the instruments overall. That just gives you a little bit of headroom to go and play with uh, to get the overall sound right at the end. Okay, just one other thing I wanted to uh, just demonstrate and talk about as well. So I've decided to track up here for a trumpet. I've got to remember that the trumpet is a wind instrument and so therefore somebody's actually got to blow into the trumpet to make a noise out of it and i'm not sure uh, how good the, the the world's best trumpet players are but i'm quite sure that even some of the real real good trumpet players aren't exactly going to play through a really long sequence without at least taking a breath at some point so thinking about how somebody actually play that instrument in real life immediately makes an, a, an impact and makes a difference as to how you're going to always going to get perceived by the listener uh, and how realistic the overall uh, sound is going to come across as. Okay, so I've now added a number of uh, extra instruments to the orchestration. Um, so going down uh, through the channels here, there's a trumpet, a tuba, there's a violin, uh, an oboe section of day, uh, the lead section, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, the original thunder clip, obviously, from the background of the original piece of uh, video. And then we have flute, uh, cine bass, uh, some basses, the violins, and the cello. So again, as I said before, then the, the cine bass is the uh, synthesizer. I'm just going to do for now, I'm just going to uh, mute this lead section so you can just hear the main orchestration. <laughs> As the thunder comes in there, just to, you don't have to listen to the thunder. Uh, so I'll just mute that as well. But yeah, so that's that's the main orchestration. But as you can see, you know, when you listen to it, it actually sounds pretty flat. So there's there's lots of noises going on there. Let's do something a little bit different now. Let's just go and look at this lead section and just go and talk about what what happens here in this lead section. So in the lead section here, we've got the violin and the oboe. There's a, there's sort of a phrase and repeat, there's a question and answer section almost uh, at the point when the oboe comes in. So the violin only plays for the first two out of the three beats in each bar. And then once we get to the stage here where the oboe starts to come in, the violin will play in the first two beats and then the oboe will almost come in with like an answer section in the third beat of each bar. What I need to go and do now is, uh, first of all, I want to make sure that this lead section doesn't get lost, because if I play through the, the whole thing again, just very briefly, and see what happens. So listening to that piece of uh, audio there, you'll notice straight away this whole lead section of the violin and the oboe uh, are lost in the track, you know, they, they just disappear into the overall noise. About the only thing that stands out a little bit as having some sort of difference to it is this tuba uh, track up here. So the tuba you could hear and it was going off and it's just got enough bass in there to make itself stand out from everything else. But again, 
this is a key point with making the instrument stand out is actually as far as the the uh, phrases go that each one is using you'll see there's, there's slightly different patterns there's slightly different phrases and and that's like obviously with the tube up here and with the trumpets and things like that, they're actually using different voicings of the same chords and that's quite important because again if everything just played exactly the same chord with exactly the same notes in the scale for those chords then things will really really start to blend into each other even more than they do currently the thing i'm going to go now go and do now is i'm going to go away and i'm just going to go and start to eq each of these tracks get some sort of uh, panning arranged so that the the instruments sort of sit alongside each other from left to right a bit like they would do it if you've got an orchestra arranged on a, on a stage somewhere else and didn't like that okay so let's just talk about eqing uh, each of the instruments different instruments play generally in different frequencies so on the track here i've just got the the tuba uh, soloed here at the moment and what i've done is i've added a uh, an eq over the top of the uh, tuba track that's just going to show us a sort of general view of what's happening within this frequency range when we play the tuba so if i just play the track so the tuba plays and as you can see as you'd expect in this lower frequency range down here the tuba has plays on low notes and so that's where most of the noise is coming in that area down here now if we were to go and switch that and say take to a different instrument or something so let's go and take one of the uh, the violin sections that we have in and see what happens with an EQ applied to the violin and here we can see that uh, that the, the frequency range up here is much higher where the violin is playing now I haven't applied any EQ settings or anything yet that's just basically as the instruments are, are first playing without me doing any changes to any settings or anything like that but if I actually bring another EQ up and make it visible here just to the left of that one let's just uh, expand that window out a little bit so we can see a bit more this is the flutes now i'm still going to solo the violin in sound but look at the, the range here the violin on the right and the flute on the left and you can see there is actually because these points are still set to exactly the same points on these scales around this sort of two to three mark there's quite a bit of crossover between those two instruments so just let me drag the timeline back a little bit and just do it again and so you can see certainly around this three mark here and between three and four there's a bleed between these two instruments going on and so we'd have to decide dynamically of where do we want to boost them and so this is when it comes down to doing the eq so for instance on the flutes down here uh, i'm likely to try and boost them within this range a little bit and then with the violins i'm likely to try and boost them within this range a little bit here uh, and what we're trying to do is actually get where the, the sounds where that instrument produces most of its noise to be fairly unique between the band of instruments so that each part of the audio spectrum when you're listening back to it has a, a distinct sound based within there for a given instrument okay one of the points we touched on slightly earlier uh, in the video was just talking about changing dynamics for an instrument and, and making it sound a little bit more realistic and i've just been got this panel here you can see there's all sorts of different uh, envelopes for this particular instrument that i could go and change so it's dynamics expression reverb you can record those things in real time so rather than just having to set them at one level and leave them there obviously you can modulate them as you move through the time of the uh, time period of the track so i'm going to close this down at the moment i'm just going to show you a little thing so let's go on this track at the moment so now this track is armed and that's actually just the dynamics of the instrument if I uh, change the setting on my, or change the, the dial in the setting on my uh, controller, you can see this line now is moving up and down as I change settings for the, uh, with the controller and dial, dial in how much dynamics I want. So I'm actually going to set what I want the dynamics to be at the start of the track, and then I've got this track armed now to record. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play the track as I play the track, I'm going to actually start to record the dynamics. And you'll see in this line here, uh, a load of points appear as I change the values and drift it up and down throughout the uh, throughout the track. So the idea is that as I go through each of the chord uh, sequence, as I go through the chords in the progression, I'm just going to like push the dynamics through each chord as we go through. So let's just go and do this and let's see what we end up with.
Okay, now you can see they've got this sort of wave effect as the dynamics pulse in and out a little bit. It's fairly subtle. Uh, it's, it's not a massive difference. I haven't pushed the dynamics right down at any point along that line. So I'm going to go through and do that to all the other tracks as well and change them so they all have this just a slight individual tone to them. Okay, so I've now gone through, I've EQ'd the different tracks, I've uh, changed the dynamics on some of them where I thought they need to be changed. Also gone through and I've changed the stereo panning on them as well, so that's opened the sounds up. And a couple of other things I've done, I've just added a, a timpani and a, a cymbal crash in towards the end here as well, just to put a bit of percussion. Now, one other thing I've done here, you'll notice, is I've actually started to group these tracks as well so there's, there's various ways you can go and group them and there's various best practices to grouping them or considered best practices and maybe you group all the strings together and you group all of the brass section together and things like that well you know obviously it depends what you want to do in, in your own particular setup what you're trying to create so what I've done in my particular setup here if I shrink these down is I actually group these into the back line and then into the lead so the the, the top line and then I can each literally just go in there and just by soloing one particular track now, it's going to pick up all of the subtracks underneath there. So I can do that and just to be able to control whole, whole groups of tracks. And the reason why I've done it this way is what I'm actually going to do now is I'll keep the top line in here actually playing with the same sort of volume all the way through the track but then I'm going to take all of the, the back line in here and all of the accompaniment and actually sort of drive that a little bit so it starts off a little bit quieter and then just drives up a little bit as the track starts to come towards its end down here so I'm just going to go away and make a few changes to those bits now and then we'll come back and see what we've got afterwards. I've put an effect uh, or put a, a track parameter on here that all can then control everything that's underneath it and very difficult for you to see but there is actually a line here that goes up and if I just play the track through very slowly the best thing probably to keep an eye on is to try and keep an eye on this slider down here on the back line and hopefully you'll see that slider start to move up a little bit as the track plays. Now the final change that we're going to do is the mastering and it's obviously called the mastering because it's just the master track and all we're going to do on here is apply a range of effects onto the master track to get the overall sort of uh, sound that we want from the complete mix. So I just added a few things in here. There's a, a compressor in here uh, and that just adds a little bit of weight to the overall sound. It just it cushies the sound down a little bit and just brings everything the top to the bottom sound within a shorter sort of range. I added an EQ in there uh, just to uh, actually get a little bit of boost just uh, across this low end just a little bit pulls a little bit out of the mids there and a bit well actually a little bit in the in the in the high low end it drops a little bit and then pulls up in the mids a little bit up here a bit towards high range up there with the EQ overall then I've added a uh, multiband compressor into there which is a very similar thing to that first option there with the compressor but now actually instead of just adjusting how much you're compressing the sounds in in across the whole of the audio spectrum you can now actually adjust how much you compress the sounds across individual parts of the audio spectrum and then finally on the end we just had a limiter in here and the idea of the limiter is that actually it, it stops the top point of the audio so you can set a level that you won't be allowed to go past and then that allows you to increase the overall loudness without peaking out at any point so at no point should you be obviously going straight over the top here in, in your meters and and uh, getting distortion because you're pushing past the point of, of, of no return in, in the levels you're pushing out but by putting a limiter in there you can take that top level out and then you can still boost everything else okay so the last thing we're going to do now after we've got everything set is i just want to go and actually render this track so i'd go out and, and save the track in the format that i wanted uh, all i just want to say on this particular thing uh, here is if you're going to go and do it then you want to go and pick a, a lossless format so I know people for these days are very used to playing mp3s and things like that and yes you can go and output in an mp3 format or whatever but because I'm going to take this and then I take this track and I'm actually going to push it into my video editing suite and then that video's then got to be rendered and there's all sorts of processing that goes on at that point to, uh, to change some of the qualities. 
the best thing you can do if you're going to use an audio source for something else is to try and save it with the best quality you possibly can to push it across and, and WAV is, a, is a, what they call a lossless format so uh, I mean it depends what you want to use it for so just think about your, your intended usage of the track but uh, yes yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to render this out into a WAV file okay so we're now back in DaVinci Resolve and I've started a new project and I've already imported the, the two uh, media items that I need from up here the reason why I decided to go for a new project is uh, we obviously we rendered the video previously so we can put it into Reaper for doing the audio uh, and this is the audio output from Reaper but my thinking into going in with a new project altogether was just because I actually want to go in and I actually want to uh, apply an overall effect to the top of the video or may want to apply an overall effect to the top of the video uh, for the final app, uh, final piece so it's easier to do that with uh, the combined video that we created previously. So let's go back into our timeline now and uh, in here and then we're bringing the timeline in here. All I'm going to do is going to drag these two pieces in and let's see how they, they sit uh, alongside each other. So there we are with the two pieces together. Now we'll notice on here a little bit that if we just move forward a little bit and just play the audio, uh, we'll see that this audio clip doesn't actually seem to come until about here somewhere. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we will do a little bit of adjustment here and see how the end of the audio clip finishes here in comparison to the thunderclap that used to exist. And then we can just basically just move this up and down the timeline slightly. You can see we're not going to chop anything off from the start, but by moving up and down the timeline we should see uh, to get a nice finish to, to see how the two combine with each other. So let's just see what we've got so far. Okay, so listening to that back, you can see that there's just a little bit of a gap at the start here. Uh, so already the animations have started, but the audio doesn't quite kick in straight away. What we're going to do is we're just going to nudge this uh, particular track, move it along a little into where we want it to be, and then see how that works. So I'm just going to do that, and then we'll play it through again. Okay, so the first part of the audio is just uh, trimmed off there and pushed back. So let's play it. Okay, so that seems to be about where we want it. Everything fits in just nicely. The audio just drops off from the soundtrack here, just as the uh, the thunder comes in. Uh, I'm just going to go and check the audio level, see how much we're actually going uh, over the top of any sort of decibel limits and stuff. So I may just cap some of this audio off a little bit, just bring the, the volume down slightly here. And the same with, with this bit here, you can just see it's peaking at this point. Uh, so I may just tweak that a little bit the overall volume level in there and then I may also just apply a little bit of fading just at the start here so it just cuts in just a little bit less and just builds up a little bit uh, from there but uh, I'll do that and then I'm also going to look at any other final effects or any final pieces I just want to put over the top of the overall uh, video and, and see how it feels and then I'll produce the, the final output and we'll see what the final output looks like. Okay, so this brings us very much towards the end of this three-part series. Uh, I've done a few more uh, audio tweaks, as I said I would do, and I've also just applied a couple more effects over the top of the overall video content to get the final piece. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope it's been informative. I hope you've enjoyed watching how I've created this, this whole sequence. I'm sure one or two of you have probably got some really useful tips and, and better ways of doing some of the things you've seen, or you may have some questions about some of the things I've done. Uh, by all means leave your comments below I, I look forward to seeing what you think of the, the series and, and anything you may have found useful in there uh, but yeah it's you know all, uh, all that's left now is to just sort of wrap up and show you the final content so I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time and here we go this is it this is the 20 second clip that I've created
Thank <laughs> you.